This conference will now be recorded. All right. So, hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. All right. So, um, somebody's coming in. Up oh, there. As soon as I start, here he comes. <laughs> Welcome back, Rodney. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, the space people came and got me. <laughs> I, I wonder why they didn't keep you. I couldn't get back on. I had to reboot the computer and everything. Oh, bless your heart. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a lot of trouble too. What's up, Frank? Power to the people, bro. <laughs> Y'all, I, I, just, like I absolutely adore Frank and Rodney together. Y'all have no idea how cute it is. It's yeah, like a little <laughs> type thing. I don't know how much fun we have when we together either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what? Okay. Um, yes, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we have a caller. Like, okay. yeah, we do have a caller, and um, Debbie came in, and we were yapping. So, hi, Debbie. Hey, caller. How's everyone doing today? Good. How are can you? Can you hear me? Oh, hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. This is Juanita. Hi. Hey Juanita. Hey. Juanita. All right, so Frank, um, we're gonna let you open up today, buddy. No, actually, I was gonna let you. Yep. <laughs> okay, so um, we're gonna have to do a few things as far as setting a few rules and making a few announcements really quick. Um, so we want to give everybody a chance to um, talk, ask questions your feedback, so on and so forth. So what we want everybody to do is um, when you're not speaking, mute your microphone. That way um, everyone will be able to be heard um, and everything like that. And now, I don't know how they mute on the phone call in. Frank, how do you do that? Mute yourself. Wait, you're, you're muted, Chester. Who muted there me? Go. Oh, there we go. Me. So, yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> right. So, I'm not sure how we do the muting when um when you're on the call, but, you know, we'll, we'll work through those issues also. Um, so, when you're not speaking, um, just mute your microphone. Um, number two, if you have a question in the middle of someone speaking or talking, you can put it in the chat. You can private message someone. Um, there is a raise hand feature on here. I don't know where it is. Somebody did it before. I couldn't remember. I think it's, I don't know where it's at. But um, if you have a question, you can send us a message um, in the chat. Um, that way we'll know that you have a question. You won't get skipped over. We can come back to you and put you in the rotation so everybody can be heard. And also when, you know, asking your question, giving feedback, try to limit the time that you're speaking so that everybody does have a chance. Sometimes we get so many people who want to say something, who have a lot to say, um, and we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to ask important questions, um, to have an opportunity to you know, vent and exercise, you know, um, their their right to ask those questions and everything like that. So um, we just want to be respectful, um, be mindful, um, and we just want to, you know, make sure we are able to share this platform where everybody can be heard and everybody um, can get the, the proper uh, answers that they're looking for or they can be directed to those answers. Can I get a thumbs up from everybody if you agree? Awesome. Sounds good. Um, so you had a homework assignment. Everybody was supposed to do something fun, listen to some music, get their dance on. How did everybody do with that? Uh, Barbara, how did you do with that? I, uh, I had a different call last time, so I didn't wasn't in the meeting, but I did watch it this afternoon. I was really excited and enjoyed everybody sharing last time. Um, so I really haven't had a chance to do a video or anything, but um, I think the things that have helped me get through this, there's a couple groups um, on Facebook called, What Do You See From Your Window? And so there's just the, all the beauty from around the world of people, you know, 
what they see from their window, and then pets in isolation. Um, those are thing, things that, since I can't go outside, I mean, other than my deck and my driveway, um, they've been very helpful, expanded my world. Awesome. Sounds good. Mary, what did you do? Um, I have myself a little dance party. Awesome. Yeah, I do. I like call them my little personal dance party for one. Just put on a yeah, put on the music and rock out. Sounds good. So, what what kind of music did you listen to? Um, I was listening. Usually, I actually do have a, a dance playlist on Spotify that I use a lot of a lot of the time. But I didn't. I used a new playlist that was basically someone had created a COVID playlist for like kind of it was music I was unfamiliar with, but it was it was good. I can dance to anything. <laughs> yeah. I, trust me, I feel the same way. As That's long as it has a nice groove and a nice vibe. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Regina. Yeah. I'm unmuted. Okay. Yep. There you go. <laughs> oh, I did nothing but color. Um, I'm not big in dancing, but I do listen to music. Um, that's pretty much it. Oh, and I did. I rode my bicycle on the trainer this past week. I at least got ten minutes in, which made me feel pretty good. So, but you know, I do. I don't do a whole lot because my knees are bad. So. <laughs> Gotcha. Totally understand. All right, James, did you do anything fun? Absolutely, I did something fun. Um, I live in Northern California, and my passion is bicycle riding. And even under the uh, shelter in place, which we're under, and now through the end of May, as of yesterday, um, bicycle riding is considered exercise. And so you can go out and do it as long as you don't. Um, stop somewhere and, you know, have dinner or whatever, which you couldn't do anyway. But uh, to make a long story short, um, the weather warmed up and there are so few cars on the road. It's really a wonderful experience. So that's that's it for me. Awesome. I was speaking with um, my cousin on yesterday and I was telling her how awesome these trees are looking. Our trees have never been greener. Our trees have never been greener. The birds are chirping a little bit louder. Um, now that everybody in the world has slowed down, now the natural essence of life can actually happen in bloom. And if you actually just pay attention to the trees, they do look a little greener and a little shine. Those leaves look a little shinier. So, right, no pollution. So, Frank, what did you do fun um, in your recovery process? I annoyed my daughter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, actually, um, you know how they had that concert for Global Citizen? Yes. Um, I, I was having a blast with that thing, and uh, uh, that, I think I was annoying her there. She's like, stop. I don't know who I was going to embarrass her with. I mean, there's nobody else in the house but me and her and my, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Global Citizen concert lasted, what, about six hours? It was yeah. about six hours long. Actually, eight. Until eight. Hour. It was eight. It started at two. Yeah, it started at two o'clock and ended at ten. Yeah, so that was just that was awesome. I had fun. I was going in and out um, yeah. at that Global Citizens uh, concert. So yeah, that was lots of fun. Loads and loads of fun. Yeah. All right, Debbie, did you do something fun? Hi. Um. Well, I put on some music. I put in. I was dancing with the Chris Brown <laughs> around my house, so I enjoyed that. <laughs> I was trying to do some of his moves. Well, um, if I was to do any of Chris Brown's moves, my knees would be like <laughs> shattered right now. Can I ask you a small question? You think the reason why I knees is because of the protozoan? protozoan? That could be very well possible. Because my legs are really bothering me all of a sudden. And I think that might be from that. Yep. 
I would have to agree. So you, you recommend anything for me to do, like icing maybe, or? Um, that I can't recommend um, anything because I know for me, sometimes ice doesn't help, but sometimes when I apply heat to it, it does. So it just depends on your body. Um, I would consult your doctor though, to let your doctor know. Um, but the natural thing that I, I, um, uh, I suggest is you getting some more calcium in your system, um, to help with that, to help strengthen your bones and all that kind of stuff like that. Okay. So that's yeah. what I would recommend. I'm going to chime in a little bit there because you want to make sure that you keep moving just gentle yeah. movement because the, the more you because you get the pain, so then you stop moving, but then that makes the whole situation worse. You gotta just really gentle moving, if you can do that. That usually, you know, whatever it happens to be, whether it's, you know, going up and down the stairs slowly, or even just like keep your lying on the couch, put your legs up, just to make sure that you're getting the fluid into the joint will help. Okay. But once we get yeah. out of this mess, Hopefully you can get your knee checked, but my, I, I know this because my knees are really bad. <laughs> so, and also I was a trainer before, so you just want me to do them. Oh, wait, Frank, you said something, but I couldn't see. It was kind of fast. <laughs> what you say, Frank? You type something up there? Oh, okay. Is he from okay. the uh, I wasn't saying anything. I just said it in the, in the room. I was just cutting around. Can you hear me? Uh, oh, not good, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, because I'm in New York. I can't reach my doctor right now because my doctor is working with the hospital and I can't get any of my doctors. They're saying they, they busy. They're helping up the COVID-19 patients. So... It's like, oh. so I can't even ask more questions. Do you, um, this is what I've been doing. I'm uh, going to have another little recommendation for you. There is this, I DVR this woman who does these workouts, and it's called either the Esmond technique uh -huh. or eccentric. And okay. the concept behind her, her workouts, and they're like 20 minutes. And the idea is to um, strengthen, gentle strengthening while getting your range of motion. And it's, you know, there's some ballet basis behind it, but it's using your own body to open up your joints, keep that range of motion, but also slowly and gently building strength. So her workouts are, they, for me, they're exactly what I need at this stage of my life. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry for taking up so much time. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, no, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. Um, Juanita, have you did anything fun? Hello? Can y'all hear me? Okay. Is yes. one yeah. All right. Maybe not. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, Ronnie, what have you done? Maybe I woke up this morning. <laughs> but no, I've I've been exercising. <laughs> Every day I wake up is a good day. I uh I've been exercising and uh, as you know, Chasta, I love music, so I'm always uh on Spotify playing my playlists and dancing. So Mary, if you need any a uh, dance partner, call me. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. Playlist on Spotify. I'm um uh, my name on Spotify is Mama Cat. Mama Cat. I think mine's Push Rod 56. What is it? Push Rod? Push Rod, 1956. I believe that's it. Okay. 1956 was a good year. 1956 was the year you were born, probably. Correct. <laughs> See, I knew it. I knew it. 
but I've been um I've gone to do a a Zoom meeting. I've I've, I've become pretty versed in Zoom. And uh, I'm going to hold my first support group meeting on Zoom to, uh, Thursday night. So y'all wish me luck with that. Uh, um, I plan to be on that call. Okay, I'll send you. I send me your email. Got gotcha. yeah, no, you. Look, you have my email address. Um, hey everyone, my email address is softcall, S A R C O I D. And then the, the letters G as in George, B as in Bravo, R as in Romeo, at Cox.net. Cox you would say Romeo. <laughs> That's what the military <laughs> said. <laughs> hey, why, why, why don't you put it in the chat? Yeah, put it in the chat. Yeah, thank you, Frank. You know, you got man, y'all got to help me out, you know. Awesome. Hey, Trina, thanks for joining us. So you got to talk, so unmute yourself. I stuff my face at the same time. Hi, I hope yep. everybody is happy as can be and staying safe. Um, before you mute, um, I have a question I have to ask everybody. I've been asking everybody, so I got to ask you, um, what have you done fun since the last time we met? Ooh, that was this weekend, wasn't it? Hmm. <laughs> I got to think about that. I know I've done something. Oh, what I did was, um, y'all going to be mad at me, but it's okay. I needed to digress and get away from the house. So I went and got me a hotel room with a king size bed with my can of Lysol and I wiped everything down mm. and I relaxed. That's what I did on Sunday. Yep. Well, that sounds fun. Yeah. It does. Very entertaining. I didn't even right, know the so, place had a pool. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So Rodney put his email address in. All right. So um, this call is probably going to be a little different. Um, I notice a lot of you have seen where we have had um, a few deaths going around and we have had a lot, a lot of um and back uh patients start patients get diagnosed with COVID-19 um so I just kind of want to get a feel of how everybody's handling that how everybody's doing with that um if you have any questions or concerns about it um let's you know if you want to vent this is the opportunity to do all that um I know it's not easy um when we see one of our ambassadors or one of our advocates or you know one of our patients to fall off and you know and pass away and and uh, make that transition um and that's why these platforms are important because we can come here and we can lean on each other um because like we really need it um <clears throat> a lot of people don't understand the connection i see you trying to give me one second um a lot of people don't understand the connection that we have as a unit as a community um, as a, I call it a tribe, because I wouldn't want to go to battle with anybody else other than the people that wear those purple hearts. So, um, uh, so how, how, Trina, how is every, how do you feel like everybody's doing with this? Trina, you wanted to say something? I, I do. I have, um, some concerns and, um, with, um, the quarantine, uh, you know, most of us know majority of us knows how to take care of ourselves and um, prevention is everything. One of my main concerns is that, yeah, we're doing a preventative measure, but to how extreme are we going? Um, we have to understand that we live in a world, A, that there is gonna be viruses and bacteria. B, with that being said, your body still needs the vitamin D from the sunlight, we still need to eat healthy, our mental, um, wealth and health is at risk as well. So how are we progressing and, and making this drastic change in our life? Are we just sheltering in place and that's it? Because if that's all we're doing, we are lowering our immune systems as well. I'm not saying go amongst the crowd. I'm not saying that. Please don't, don't, don't take it out of the contents. But what I am saying is that the rea reality is that we still have 
air in us to breathe. We still have to live. Are we avoiding going to our doctor's appointments because um, of this pandemic? Or are we neglecting ourselves? And that's, that's where I'm at, trying to find that medium. Yeah, and I think that too is like an individual perspective and aspect. Um, I think however comfortable the individual feels along with, you know, the consultation of their doctor um, and all that, I think we have to be smart about that. You know, sun is good unless you, you know, your doctor has told you otherwise that vitamin D from the sun is uh, vital to anybody as a person, period. So you got you have to get out of the house. You have to breathe fresh air. You have to do something. You got to get the moving and all that kind of stuff like that. Um, I say if you follow the guidelines that have been set out through the CDC, um, well, I need I see you so get ready. You're going to be talking to just, um, you're gonna, you know, uh, if everybody can mute their microphones real quick, except for Trina. OK, I'm not sure what's going on with Juanita, <laughs> but um, yeah, just, okay. muted, there you go. Okay, Trini, you can leave yours unmuted. But um, follow the guidelines that the CDC have said. I've washed my hands to the point to where I got the little crust in between my fingers and stuff like yes. that. And, you know, and I ain't put no lotion on. That's my fault, though. Mm-hmm. You need lotion. <laughs> right, Roddy, you need lotion. Yes. <laughs> wash your hands. So if you're washing your hands, if you're going with your mask and all, and trust me, y'all, everybody's making masks everybody you know if you say you can't find a mask you're telling stories everybody has masks everywhere mine has my name on it though (laughs) so i got lucky (laughs) but follow the cdc guidelines washing your hands sanitize wiping stuff down so on and so forth i'm not saying be overzealous with all of this to where you become so precautionary that you just want to live in a bubble. That's unrealistic. Yes. I mean, it's unrealistic. I'm not saying don't be so extreme to where, you know, you don't want the air you breathe to be contaminated with anything. Just, just use, don't, don't just, don't overthink it. That's just from my perspective. You still got to be able to live because if that's the case and you'll never leave the house, you still got to get groceries. You still got to go to the doctor. I mean, you don't have a choice. You have to go to the doctor. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Absolutely. you know, I, I just feel like that's one of those individual things when you do your own consultation, what you feel comfortable with in your mind, once you talk to your doctor, so on and so forth. And whatever decision you and your doctor come up with together, that's what guidelines you need to follow. Absolutely. I concur. I concur. I was just... um. Just, just really just trying to figure out how we all, how we all have been affected and how we all are taking measures um, to be cautious, but not be a prisoner. And it, right. that, that was just basically what I was just trying to convey. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and it's, it's like so many people have <laughs> become so over consumed with mm-hmm. Corona this and Corona that. So it's just one of those things like don't overconsume yourself. That's why I want you to think about other stuff. Have some fun. Do something fun, even if you are stuck in the house. If you have to go, you know, Regina says she don't feel comfortable walking in her neighborhood. But if you don't feel that way, then go walk around your own house. You paying for it anyway. Go walk around your own house. You know, just, just get outside and go get when you check the mailbox, take the long way to check the mailbox, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, just get outside, get fresh air so on and so forth, you know, and just, you know, very that's how important. I feel It's very important that we do um, keep in mind that even though we're sheltering in place for the best part, we still, like you said, it's the importance of moving. We still, right. the muscles, the blood, you got to get things circulating. You have to, you just can't sit there, lay in bed or sit on your couch. You got to move. You have stairs, right. you're saying overexert yourself, but at least hit them stairs once if you can get through that during the day um, even just pick laundry do something you know i, I concur but thanks right. for um answering my question i appreciate you no problem all right Juanita, it's good to have you back and so i asked everybody else um what's something fun that you've done um during this whole pandemic and 
all that kind of stuff. I gave everybody an assignment to do um, a dance party. But a lot of people don't dance. Some people dance. Some people listen to music. Some people colored, planted flowers, went into their garden. So what did you do, Juanita? A little bit of everything, a little bit of nothing. I was supposed <laughs> to be at a dance party right now, but then I remembered this meeting is on, so I picked this one. And tomorrow I have a lunch bit time, well, just a lunch meet and greet on Zoom because I haven't seen my coworkers in two months. And when you think you're sick of people, you realize you're not when you can't go see them. So that's what we're doing. Awesome. That sounds good, y'all. These video calls and stuff have been amazing, um, have been simply amazing and has literally brightened up my spirits as well. Um, if anybody caught my live on Friday, I think it was Friday I went live. I said the most joyous thing about this whole pandemic is seeing families reconnect, is seeing um, husbands and wives spending time with their children together. Because a lot of times life can be so busy to where you got husband dropping them off at school, wife picking them up from school. By the time dinner is on the table, everybody's getting home so they can reset and do it again the whole next day and all that kind of stuff like that. So it just seems, it, it feels good to see families reconnect um, and everything like that. People doing family activities together and all that kind of stuff. So that that that's 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 what you know um has been you know good for me now i'm going to ask you a question and i want everybody to think about it for a second and then barbara when you're ready you're going to go first question is what is one thing you want to take away from this pandemic think about it is what uh, just give me one thing you want to take away from the whole pandemic experience barbara when you're ready you can go ahead um i guess that um well church is a big part of my life and that um we've discovered that the church is not a building it's really the people we have really amazing um live stream services and our pastor gets on a couple times a week and just does a prayer night with us on Facebook Live um, that we can still stay connected even if we have to be apart for some reason. Awesome. That sounds good. Mary? Let's say um, let's say um, You know, actually, for me, it I've actually had um, a couple people from my past who I haven't talked to in a while. So I guess it's for me to pull it, pulling something from this is that, um, you know, sometimes friends you don't know, talk to in a long time, but that friendship can still go on and to make an effort and reach out to those people, even if you haven't talked to them in a long time. So. I guess that. That's that's actually actually good. Um, sometimes you forget about those relationships that helped you get to where you are. Um, I don't feel like any relationship um, that you are in um, or coming out of or going through is by happenstance. I think it happens for a reason. Um, and I think that there are some things that you could take away from every relationship that you're in, whether it be a friendship, an intimate relationship, so on and so forth. So I agree, Mary. We're on the same page with that. Um, Regina, what's one thing you want to take away from the pandemic? You know, it's really hard to answer that, especially when you live on your own. You know, I'm pretty much a loner and I've always been most of my life. Um, the one thing I can say, it has given me an opportunity to get some things done around my house. <laughs> you know, some ne much needed things that I could do on my own instead of um, having to pay, pay somebody. Um, but other than that, it's that's just a real hard question for me because, you know, my uh, I don't have a whole lot of family, and um, I miss my grandbaby, 
because I used to spend every Saturday with her. So one day I did a drive by to my daughter's house and made them come out of the house so I can see them. Mm -hmm. um, I did a drive by to my mom's. It's, to me, family is everything. It is truly everything, especially when your family is small like mine is. Um, you know, and most of everybody else, they live out of town. So it's just really hard to even get anybody together. But it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's just a, a weird question for me, honestly. Right now, for me, the takeaway is I'm getting some things done in my house. So could your takeaway be um, your appreciation for... Um, family and the fact that sometimes it is okay to slow down so you can get necessary things done that need to get done no family is for me it's it's much more important than getting things done in my house but gotcha I'm, honestly because you know i have a sick mom and i talk to her every day that hasn't changed I talk to my daughters every day. That hasn't changed. What has changed is that I can't see my grandbaby mm -hmm. um, in person. And that has changed. You know, I you know I helped raise my oldest granddaughter. My youngest grandbaby is three, and I wanted to give her as much time. And I know that's not possible, but as much time as I could with her that I gave to my oldest granddaughter, who's now 19. And so the baby mm -hmm. is three. And so every Saturday we chose that day because I took her to dance class, you know, we went to go visit with my mom. We went to the market as she called it, it's the farmer's market. Um, it was our fun day. I get up, take her to breakfast. I'll do this, you know, do this and do that. We spend the whole day together. So, and I miss that. Right. You know, I have very few friends, but I do know that next week, one of my friends actually reached out to me because she says she works in the ER and she said it's getting worse in our state. And even in our city, we, our city besides Indianapolis, have a high population of COVID. For our small state, it's high. She reached out to me and said that she wanted to come visit me. And I don't let anybody in my house. Um, she wanted to come visit me. I said, well, we can visit at a distance. You can come park in my driveway and I'll sit on my sidewalk by my porch or something. She's actually going to do it and she's bringing me lunch. So one day next week. So That's awesome. I haven't seen her in eh, over a year. And it's her turn to come visit my house anyway. <laughs> awesome. Sounds good. All right, James, what is one thing you want to take away from the pandemic? Well, I must say that's a very thought provoking question, as everybody else has said. Um, you know, I'm retired and my wife and I are very fortunate to have a stable house to, to live in and good finances. And so what I would like is to, for all the people who have this just hit them broadside. They had no idea it was coming. You know, they work in a restaurant, they work in an industry that just shut down. I'd like for those people to somehow come out, uh, you know, of, of, of the bottom of the barrel. And and, and I, I'm going to try to see what I can do to help. You know, there are lots of ways to help, but um, I feel that I owe at least something to all of those people who are much more unfortunate than I am. What city and state are you in, James? I'm in San Francisco. Okay. Um, I'm gonna link you with somebody. I have a friend who's a pastor of a church over there. And um, he does oh, a great. lot of giving back that's in great. the San Francisco area. Um, I want to say he's in San Francisco. I'll, I'll double check on that, and then I'll get back with you and let you know. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Sounds good. Frank, what do you want to take away from this, buddy? Well, for me, it's 
um, I'm actually talking more to people and I'm doing a lot more of the um, meetings, a lot of meetings. Um, so with other, I've actually started working with other organizations, not just sarcoidosis people. And I'm actually learning a lot from that. Um, finding out that, you know, we have, we've been doing a lot of things together and working together to get a common goal together um, done. So I think that's something I, excuse me, still want to keep on working on. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I'm doing a partnership with um, Lupus. Um, so next month I'll still be advocating. So trust me, Frank, I got you. I uh, totally understand. Um, Debbie, what do you want to take away from this pandemic? Two things I like to take away. Number one, um, appreciate appreciate small things, big things. Um, I took a lot of things for granted. So I would like to appreciate life more. And I found out what uh, one of my desires of my heart is to work in a nursing home. Mm. Maybe comb. I'm a retired person. I'm a retired correction officer in New York City. So I don't I don't work any longer. So I want to give back to society and maybe paint someone's nails or even comb their hair or let them just talk to me about how they did what they used to do. Something something in that app. That's volunteer work also. So that's that's my desire in my heart. Gotcha. OK, cool. Um. Rodney? Well, what I've taken from this, Chasta, is that life is short. Tomorrow is not promised. And uh, one thing that we really need to do that this has brought to my attention is I have a lot of male friends that I grew up with. And we're very, very close. And we never tell each other we love each other. You know? So I made it a point all last week to call my buddies and to make them say, I love you. <laughs> it was hard for some of them, but they did, man, you know I love you, man, you know I love you. So now they're calling me and they just call it, man, I love you. <laughs> so, you know, that was that was something that it uplifted me. And to do the same thing with my family. Yeah. I have a large, you know, unlike with Gina, I have a very large family. Where I grew up, you know, my grandmother had 25, 30 grandkids around her house every day. And we called it Reeseville. My last name is Reese. So that became Reeseville. But uh yeah, we are we are getting together. My wife has a large family also, and we did a Zoom meeting. Zoom is the thing. I tell you, this thing is so great. As far as putting people together and you getting able to see each other. Right. You know, like you say, uh, Regina, you were saying you couldn't see your friend. You know, with, with, with these apps that's out there now, they don't have to drive by. I mean, it's better to see in person, but you all can talk and look at each other and see what each other's doing. You know, you, you just can't feel each other, but it's still uplifting you just to be able to see them, see their smile. If they're crying, to see them cry and talk to them, you know, and try to help them out. So, um, we're planning a, a Zoom meeting with my family uh, here in the near future. We were supposed to have a family reunion in September, but you know, that's been canceled. So uh, that's about it, Jasper. You know, just live, live life to the fullest while you can, enjoy it, and tell everybody you love, you know, you love them. And oh, another thing, just like Regina, missing my two, well, all of my grandkids, but especially those two youngest grand boys. They love their papa and their papa love them. Oh, because they boys. <laughs> yeah. Grand boys and them granddads. But yeah, I, I, I have four grand boys and one, one granddaughter. And the one that's in the middle, he would stay with me every weekend. Mm. And, you know, when they first got out of school, he was here. That was fine. But he wanted to go home to see his big brothers. 
So when he got home, he wanted to come back like after two weeks. And I told him, I said, man, I said, Papa, can you have your back right now? You know? and over there, so I don't know, you know, where he's been testing. Right. It's something that we have to advocate for. More testing. Because we can we can isolate and and and, and quarantine all we want to. But until we can see who has this, mm -hmm. them, you know, like the, the contact tracing, find out who they've been around, you know, get them not, get them, you know, somewhere where they would be away from the, the, the people that's well. Right. A lot of people out there that, 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 that are well. And the, the danger is coming in contact with somebody who has it and they don't know they have it. Right. So we have to advocate for testing for all. Everybody needs to be tested. Gotcha. Even the kids. Hopefully, I mean, the president has said that, but then not, not you know, when he said it, he said, well, we're going to pay for 2% of, of the state's population. What's 2%? Two people. <laughs> you know, that's just like saying, okay, we're not going to do anything, which is what you're doing. Is, you know, don't get me started in politics, then. Rodney, I'm just gonna say, don't get me started because I am not a okay. camp. Okay, okay, we'll 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 come back to the politics. We'll come back yeah, to the that's politics. Yeah, that's right. You have to have leadership at the top. Yeah, we'll come back to the politics. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, yeah. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> all right, Trina. Um, what's one thing you want to take away from from the pandemic? What a great question to ask. I uh, will have to say pres preservation. And the reason why I say that is because with preservation comes self-love, peace, and commitment to keep those things. Rather, okay. you're loving abroad and abound or self-preservation or preserving those things that matter most to you. It could be an individual, it could be a cause, it can be anything. So I have to say preservation. If you want me to elaborate more, I can. Did we lose Shasta? It looks like Thank she you, Okay. But if y'all like, like for me to elaborate more on um, preservation, I, I, I just ask the way I, I can define it further if you like. But I think y'all get the main picture. <laughs> okay, since since Chast is not here right now, uh, is it anyone who hasn't spoken yet? Well, Rodney, I want to get back. Go ahead. I'm sorry, it's Kathleen. So I'm I'm really sorry, everybody. It seems like Chast is having a problem, and I don't know where Frank disappeared to. I was signing off. Um, I'm just in s severe pain. I have been for quite a few days um, since the weekend. So I'm going to trust Trina. You're you're fantastic. Will you lead this, please? I'm on. Oh, yes, Terrence there. Okay. okay. I'm going to say good night, everybody. Have a wonderful meeting. Oh, there's Chester again. Hi. All right, y'all. My my computer just decided it wanted to act like a Dura. But go ahead. I'm so, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you, you weren't there and Frank wasn't there. I was just saying good night to everybody. I'm really sorry. I'm in a lot of pain, so I got to sign it's off. Okay. Feel better. Right? Love you. Love Kathleen. you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you feel better. Too. Yes, before you go, I'm, I'm praying for you and I love you, baby. And I love you too, Mr. Rodney. I love you all. You know that. All right. I'll see you soon. Bye, Regina. I'll see you, see you all soon. Okay. Bye. All right, so um, sorry about that, y'all, but um, Juanita, um, your turn. <laughs> um, there's a couple things I wanted. Some of it is duplicative. Like, I really like the idea um, of, well, for me personally, I already know what we're going to take away from my job. It's taken me 15 years to get them to acknowledge the benefits of remote working, and now they get to see it. <laughs> And so I said, it's time for me to retire now, I guess, because I said, I'll, I'll retire when y'all finally do it my way. 
Um, mm. And, you know, I like the fact that we're reaching out to one another because now it feels like sometimes it feels like the end of the world. So I'm reaching out more and not waiting, not doing my hideaway, calling people back now. And I like the fact that our, you know, furry friends and family are coming out more often and reconnecting with one another and leaving space for us. I would hope that what we would take away is the evidence that our behavior has destroyed the environment and that we can repair it just by changing our ways. That's it for me. All right. Sounds good. That, that's really, really good. I definitely can um, identify with the furry friends because um, I've seen people in my neighborhood walk dogs that I've never seen and even knew they had. <laughs> so I'm just sitting here like, I didn't even know you had a dog, <laughs> let alone a furry friend. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, it's just something about this nature. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy because um, we were standing outside and we were looking at the trees and I said, those trees look mighty green. And, you know, like Frank said earlier, the no pollution and all that kind of stuff like that. Like, it's amazing what happens when the world slows down. So um, with the world slowing down and um, everything like that, you know, hey, I just want these. Um, I just want these. um uh, yeah, I just want these uh, tornadoes to stop. If I can get these tornadoes to stop, then we'll be good. And then we're going to have even more bad weather tomorrow. So, all right. We just had a caller join. Caller number three. Hi. Okay. Maybe they're not ready to talk yet. Caller. Okay, don't know who that is. So everybody's showing off their dogs and pets? Okay, Juanita, what's your doggy's name? This is Yoda, which you would be able to tell that she's really excited because her ears stick out at the side. <laughs> hey, Yoda. They say hello to you. Mary, we never knew what your cat's name was. We got two cats. There's this one. That's Calliope. And this one, oh, is Cosmo. They're brother and sister, but they look nothing alike. But yeah, Callie and Cosmo. And I have a dog somewhere around here named Jasper. I have two dogs, uh, Stella and. Um, Rexy. Nice. I have a dog named Callie. Actually, it's not my dog. It's my daughter's. I've been babysitting it for a year now. <laughs> yeah, that's the way I got my little Yorkie. That's a grand dog that was supposed to be here for a few months and it's been here uh, six years. And I also have a, a, a brown bear out in the backyard. His name is Smokey. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Just, just kidding. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, James has a question Question for Frank. Uh -oh. Yeah, hi. Uh, th this is a question um, maybe Frank knows. I'm going to ask everyone. What, what do you know about met methotrexate? And, and if you want to know why I'm asking, I'll, I'll tell you. But I just wanted to ask the general question. Okay, yeah, I'm sure that a lot of us have been on it, so a lot of us have probably different inf information on it. Um, for me, I was on it. I was on the um, pills uh, first, and it bothered my stomach. It really bothered my stomach, um, and then I went, and um, then I went to the uh, the injections, and that was working for a little while. But I have this w weird thing that is every six months, the pills decide to stop working for me or any kind of medicine. I have a six month time limit on, on medicines. And it's pretty, except for the, uh, knock on wood, except for this last medicine I'm on now, um, 
it's been every six months I've had to change my medicine. But when it was working, it was working well. Uh, the one thing you have to worry about, like I said, is the pills. If you have any stomach problems, um, it can react to it. Um, it is a chemotherapy drug. So you have to be careful when you do that. But I'm sure there's a lot of people who could talk about methotrexate, good or bad. Anybody else? I know Regina uses it or used James, it. James, I was on it, um, and it didn't do. It didn't help my sarcoidosis. Um, my doctor, we he put me on it as a means of trying to wean me off the prednisone. And when I would get down to about 20 milligrams on my prednisone, my long symptoms, you know, they would flare back up and I'd have to go back up on the prednisone. So because of the side effects uh, of, of uh, you know, affecting your liver from methotrexate, you know, my my pulmonary doctor, he, he went on and took me off of it. I, I tried it for about four months and it, it didn't do anything for me as far as... Well, I know I'm on it now. This is Regina. I am on it now. It hasn't bothered me up until here recently. Um, I don't even think it's working now because I'm doing Remicade. Um, and Remicade is chemo and so is metro methotrexate. And I honestly think the methotrexate in the pill form is not doing much of anything. However, my doctor wants to keep me on it because he said it's giving me some benefits, which I don't believe it is. Um, but I'm still on it. I'm not having an issue. I just don't think it works anymore. I'm on it as well. Um, and I went the Remicade and Prednisone and did all those things too. Um, it's okay. I mean, I am a little, I feel like crap on like the two days after I take it and a little nauseous and loss of appetite. Um, but I don't know if it's working. <laughs> okay, but, well, uh, yeah, that's the tough thing. I, I want to say you. when it's working because of the. Um, um, I think it. We're taught about it. It's because it is a um, chemo, and the way it makes you feel for a day or two. So it's really hard to say. Yeah, it's working. <laughs> yeah. I well, thank you. Sorry. Go ahead. Go. <laughs> I'm on it now, and I've been on it for maybe two years now. Um, recently had the doses upped by my rheumatoid, uh, rheumatology doctor, but it must be doing something for me. Uh, I get sick for the first the day or two after you take it. I be, I'm very careful about what I eat. But when we did my last, C, last few CT scans, while I, ha I haven't gotten less nodules, but I haven't gotten more either. So we're going to stick it out until until my liver thinks it's a stupid idea, and then we'll try something else. You also yeah. have to watch it because it messes with your kidneys as well. And I have some kidney um, issues now as a result of taking the methotrexate. And I also have to be careful taking that when you um, doing like a another drug that uses for inflammation is meloxicam. So anything that's like that, you have to really, really be careful. Make sure you consult with your doctor. Uh, um, I now have some kidney issues as a result of those two, those two types of medications. Okay, well, I want to thank everybody for sharing their stories. Um, just by way of association, my, my situation is very similar to Rodney's. Uh, I'm halfway through all of my uh, prednisone, and uh, they brought in a new doctor and consult, and he wants to put me on methotrexate. And I'm kind of going, well, I haven't figured out if, if the uh, prednisone has worked yet. Um, so I'm a little bit leery, especially when I read about the uh, liver issues, and also uh, apparently quite a bit of uh, angst with um, you know, lower bowel issues and things like that. So um, I was just trying to get a, 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 an opinion from experienced users, as they say. So thank you. Yeah, they tried to uh, put me on um, prednisone as well. Um, I just, um, 
I just couldn't see being so young because methotrexate can be detrimental to a fetus. And because I don't have any children, I don't want it to mess with me that way. So um, that's why I decided against the methotrexate. But I'm also not on prednisone. I just do Remicade. And that is the only thing I'm doing now as far as um, SARC is concerned. And I'm so, so happy. So, 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 so happy. Yeah. Um, Rodney has a question for Juanita. Hi. Hey, Juanita, you say you've been on the methotrexate for some years now? A couple of years, yeah. Um, okay. Go ahead. So are they monitoring your liver functions? Every three months, blood tests. I have a whole blood okay. panel that gets done. I didn't and, know about the um, kidneys, though. And yeah, I didn't know about so, that. Yeah, I didn't know about that. And I've been, I was scheduled to go back in for a second kidney stone surgery this month. But clearly that's elective as far as we're looking at. The last time they removed it, I had close to like huge boulders um, in there. And they, were, they had to go over a stint that time. So knowing that, I may put that to my doctor. Um, yeah. The other thing is, recently, methotrexate was found that if you have, you should get check a one year check for your skin because sometimes it causes skin cancer. So, um, have you have your doctors ever tried? You have you ever tried Remicade? I have not. In fact, I'm going to call up and ask about it. Um, right, because of my joints hurt now, so I'm look at something else. That's a good idea. Yeah, they, they have some more immunosuppressive uh, drugs out there that you might can try. That, I mean, I just worry about your liver. You know, that yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. all I I, um, I would suggest also that, you know, anytime you get put on any type of medication, always, always, always read side effects. Um, sometimes I won't take a, a, a certain medication because of whatever side effect it has attached to it. And the methotrexate was just that for me. Um, being 34 and I'm still capable of having children, I don't want methotrexate to mess up an ovary, a fallopian tube, an egg, or anything. So, you know, I, um, I said I want to at least give myself a chance if I ever decide to get married one day. I don't want anything messing up the possibility of me being able to have a child. So I always read um, those side effects and everything because, yeah, I learned that from the prednisone. Trust me. Read the side effects. Before you can uh, consume one drop of a medication, read the side effects. Well, for me, I, it was e a lot easier for me to take methotrexate because of the misdiagnosis when I went to uh, the chemo I was taking there was for, for the lung cancer. Um, <laughs> for the four, I took four years worth of, it was actually a mix of two chemos. Want to talk about bad? This was nothing compared to that, but yet it was bad enough that I was starting to get sick in my stomach, and I have I have IBS, so it, that's one of the reasons why I have to be very careful with the medicines. Gotcha. Okay. Did that answer your question, Rodney? All righty. Well, I couldn't hear Rodney's answer. <laughs> he's oh, he's muted. Oh, yeah. Uh, I said, I didn't have a question. Uh, Chasta, I was just talking with Regina about whether or not they were monitoring her liver functions while she was on the methotrexate. Now, uh, uh, Regina. I just say that that met that uh Remicade was a was a cancer drug. But uh I, I think it's not it's not a cancer drug, it's an immunosuppressive drug, but I don't think it's listed, you know, like methotrexate is listed as a chemo. You said it was a chemo drug. Remicade, uh, Remicade is listed as a mild chemotherapy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I know it's an immunosuppressive. Yeah, I just yeah. started it in August. Um 
I've been on it nine for ten years. Mm-hmm. What Remicade? Remicade, yeah. I've been on yeah. Remicade for ten years. Yeah, it's wow. it's listed. It I we have it listed on my papers as a mild chemotherapy treatment. Mhm. It's on mine too. It says that on mine too. Yeah, chemotherapy. My concern is, and this, and I don't know if anybody else is working and getting um, Remicade, but my, this is my concern. You know, they have the new drug out called Inflectra, which is a biosimilar to Remicade. My issue and my doctor's issue is that we're going to be fighting this um, come June because they are trying to get me to go to Inflectra. The problem with Inflectra is. There has only been one study. I did my research. I got all the information I can find and I gave it to my doctor. And my doctor submitted all of that information to my insurance company to let them know I'm worried about her getting on this drug because I just started Remicade. And he said, Remicade is not a drug that you want to go flipping and flopping from one um, drug to another. And because it will probably have its side effects if you go from the regular Remicade to a biosimilar, which is really the generic to um, Remicade. I'm not interested in it and I'm worried about it because come June, end of June, starting in July, um, I'll have to go to Inflectra. Well, what, not, is, your, is your insurance making you do that? Yes. Um, um, yep. So part, part of the reason why it's doing that, Regina, is because when they look at your diagnosis, and they look what you're being treated with, there's a code. Um, and right. I learned this from our caseworker. So your insurance company is fighting it because um, Remicade is not an FDA drug for sarcoidosis. Remicade is originally um, FDA approved for Crohn's disease. Right. And rheumatoid. Right, and rheumatoid. Fletcher is not either. In Fletcher, there yeah. has only been one study for that in Fletcher. And they only studied 26 people, and then the study was back in 2018. So the reason why they're sense. doing that is because it's a cheaper option for them to pay for. That's they don't all right. pay about money. For the it's exactly, Rodney. But <laughs> That's what they don't want about. to pay for it. You can exactly. fight that. You can fight no. that. Yeah, you can fight it. Good I was in last week, and that's what they exactly what they said. We will be fighting this because. Yeah. You just started Remicade. You've not even been on it a year, and they're talking about moving you from Remicade to Inflectra when we already know the Remicade is working. So why, you know, reverse what's going on with me by switching to this who makes, other who makes the drug? medication? Who huh? makes? Is it the same company? The uh, Remicade? No, who makes Pfizer Inflectra? Makes, Pfizer makes Inflectra. No. Okay, and that's what I was gonna say because I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm well versed with Remicade, and I ain't never heard that. Yeah, I thought there's several different generics out there to the uh, Remicade. The only uh, but, other, the only other thing I know besides Remicade is the Infliximab. Right, but it's but now the, now there's Inflectra, which is the bio yeah, it's not, similar. Yeah. It's a bio. Yeah, that's similar. another drug, Casta. Wow. Infected. Yeah. Yeah. But try to fight that, Regina, and try to get your doctors on board and get your doctors to write your insurance company. Oh, they're already on board. We are yeah, already yeah. working on it. We got all the research and everything. Well, you, your insurance company have their little review board also, which is doctors that they pay. So, you know, like I say, get yours to write them and tell them, you know, that, that you need to be on this remedy. Okay, you don't need to be on the uh, generic. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, this is I, I need to go work for an insurance company. <laughs> <laughs> they, rule, they rule the world. Oh, yeah, they do. And also, Regina, you can tell um, whatever doctor, um, whatever doctor uh, recommended you to do Remicade. Doctor Culver. Whoever. Okay, so go to ask him to get in touch with his caseworker to also see in the event that you don't get the Remicade approved and you have to switch you to see if they can get you um, on like a grant program. Right. I'm on one now. Um, Okay. Okay. I'm on one now. But this is my issue. 
Okay, so I go to Cleveland Clinic, Cleveland Clinic. I have Daniel Culver as my pulmonologist. You all know who he is. Yeah. He's my pulmonologist. He cannot prescribe me the Remicade the, because it's cross state lines. So what he had to do is um, my dermatologist who's well-versed in um, sarcoidosis of the skin is working with Daniel Culver, my pulmonologist. The problem is when he writes up my report, he can only say skin sarc. He can't say full body pulmonology or any of that kind of stuff because then we'll be going across state lines and then I won't be able to get Remicade. So that's just another issue that oh, I'm ha I will probably have. Exactly. So all, cause all of my doctors, all of my doctors are in Cleveland Clinic except for my primary care and for my and my dermatologist because nobody in the city of Fort Wayne knows any damn thing about sarcoidosis. Nobody. So yeah. I had to go find my doctors. So do you have a PCP in Indiana? I do. I have a primary care right here in Fort Wayne. She okay. and she is all about sarcoid too and she she will not refer me to anybody here in Fort Wayne because she feels the same way that I do. And so she's always referring me to Cleveland Clinic because she's pretty sure, and like I am, every piece of issue that I'm having is related to my sarcoid. That's a perfect opportunity for you to get them connected to the, patient, the, the, the physician's portal on FSR's website so that they can get educated. Um, my primary care doctor has done the same. Um, this was when um, FSR first put the physician portal together um, and stuff like that. And my PCP and her entire practice, they all treat people now with sarcoidosis because of that um, physician portal that FSR came up with. Virginia. Yeah. Why is it that your insurance is it your insurance say that you can't go across state lines and get medical treatment? I can get medical treatment. I can get that. They is because of the rules that happens to be on our insurance. I can't go across state lines, and the doctor can't prescribe a drug like that. Which I was really shocked and surprised because yeah, even Cleveland it. Clinic said that it has to do with my insurance. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Is your insurance? Yeah. Okay. And that's through your yeah, job. Cleveland Clinic is in my insurance. It's in my um network. network mm -hmm. But they can't prescribe a drug like Remicade across state lines. Ain't that stupid? It okay, question. No Regina. <laughs> Regina. Have you tried with your primary, since your primary is over your all well being, your whole health? Have you tried getting your primary to write up that script for you to have that medication? This way you're not going across, it's just that you'll be going to another facility. I have my dermatologist, my dermatologist is my go-to person for my sarcoid because I have sarcoid of the skin as well too. So he is my okay. go-to person. And okay, he but is your primary um, revocating okay. now. All right. I, I, I would trust that if your primary and your dermatologist have a consultation so that this primary can be in charge, although she's consulting with your other specialists. You understand what I'm saying? So we're trying to uh, bridge a gap. Right. That's what we're trying to do by letting your primary go ahead and take over, even though everything is already in place so that it doesn't get denied. Gotcha. But oh, right you know, the, 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 one thing, the, the issue with Remicade is that I don't know in, 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 in all states, but in my state, Remicade has to be prescribed by a rheumatologist. That, not in South Carolina. Yeah. It, it like I, say, I don't know if it's in all states, but it is in my state. So I don't know how it yeah. is in Indiana, Regina, or if you go to a rheumatologist. I don't have a rheumatologist here, but I may have to get one. But my dermatologist is, uh, because I have skin, skin sarc, he's able to prescribe the, prescribe um, okay. yeah. And so okay. he is actually getting the full prescription and all the rules and stuff 
that go with the Remicade from Daniel Culver. Right, right. But my my dermatologist has to send in the request. Daniel Culver oh, cannot. Uh, Ain't nothing wrong so with coming through the back door. That up. <laughs> All right, me. Let, go, let COVID do it and let him prescribe it. Nothing that wrong. Now it's going to say, since they work in the same office, he can refer you to a rheumatologist and they all can work together. We can beat mm -hmm. this. Come on now. Let's think. So I might have to get a rheumatologist here um, just so I have. <laughs> so right, right. That, 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 that wouldn't hurt. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll talk to my um, primary care about getting me a rheumatologist here. So then yeah. that's that well, three so people he can working like on it. Prescription. Huh? Just so he can make the prescription. That's really all you need him for. Yeah. All right. I I've had done that. Um, Kaiser. And until um, five years, it wasn't until five years ago that they found out sarcoidosis even existed for the most part. And then I was diagnosed and recently I got a rheumatologist because of the joint pains and she's been prescribing other things along with my pulmonologist. They all work together, but it helps when you have everybody on the same sheet of paper because you have to do most of the work to so make sure they talk to each other. Yeah, I do know that my, even though my primary, well, see, this is my other issue. My primary care is a doctor of nurse practitioner she is absolutely phenomenal, and I would not change her for anybody um, because she does understand sarcoid. Um, but I just don't have all the other doctors here because the half the doctors here don't know crap about sarcoid, or they don't even want to touch a patient that has that condition because they don't know how to work with them. Question. Okay, so you said that your insurance company will fight you if you see a, a specialist out of state correct no. so how's that working if you're seeing other specialists from out of state are they are you paying most of the course or how that works no the cleveland clinic happens to be in my network the problem is just for certain kinds of medications like remicade the cleveland clinic cannot um prescribe cross state lines for a remicade for that kind of um, medication. Now they can do um, other medications and things like that. Remicade just happened to be one of those specialized medications that you cannot do cross state lines like that. So that's why um, Cleveland is working with my dermatologist in order to get me that medication. So all of my, so my Remicade goes through my dermatologist because I do have skin sarc. So okay, that, so like Rodney was saying, you need to get yeah. a rheumatologist within your state, and then let them talk it out, and then go ahead and go get your treatment. Yeah, and also Regina, Trina was right about you know you're gonna have all these doctors and these specialists, but you need to let your primary care doctor know, or they they need to communicate with each other, mm -hmm. and let that primary care doctor when you need one doctor to speak for you. Let that be and, your primary care. They, and she um, and they do speak with each other because anything that happens with me, she knows all about it because this is why I will not switch. Cleveland Clinic and Parkview Hospital is who I go through. All are on my chart. So if I go to Cleveland Clinic and if something's wrong with me at Cleveland Clinic, she's going to see that information and she's going to get back to me. So she is all the way in the loop. The right. only part of the loop she's not in, so I have to keep her informed, is my dermatologist because he's an independent private practice person. So, so, but she gets all the inf she gets all of the information because um, she's Regina, she the loop. Do you have to do referrals or no? Are you HMO, PPO, POS? I am uh, PPO. I can. I don't have to do referrals. Okay, so if that's the case, like what like Rodney was saying earlier, just go through your primary. She is going to be over your overall health, even though they're going to consult with each other. But to keep that ball rolling and keep everything in motion, your best bet at this time is to go through your primary and let her be in charge. Although they're consulting with each other, the insurance company is not going to give her a harder time than they would with the specialist that's over state lines. Oh, girl. I used to be a referral coordinator. I I I, I can tell you, but 
understand exactly what y'all talking about, but my insurance has gone from great to crap. Mm. I believe that. <laughs> it has gone from great to crap, and it's going to be Kaiser? exciting next year. Huh? Are you, are you with Kaiser? I have um, Anthem Insurance. Oh, that. Blue Cross Blue Shield. Yeah. I do too. And I don't have any issues, but it's like, like Shasta was saying earlier, the coding and it's all in the wording. The state mm -hmm. of Indiana has gone from good to crap. In the state of Indiana, we have one of the health, uh, worst health care um, support ever. Literally. And so um, right now, our um, like our part view people here, our hospital systems here, and our anthems, they're fighting each other. They can't come come to a um, conclusion on how they want to contract out and all this stuff. I mean, it is horrible up here. So but what you may want to do, if that's the case, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut nobody off. I know we're short on time. I'm going to say this real quick. But what you might want to do is start reconsidering who you're going to select for this next open enrollment so that you can prepare yourself and your specialists and try to get um, get on a, a, a good rapport with with um, whoever you can within your state lines in regards to what you need. Right. It's through my job. My insurance is through my job. I don't have open enrollment. It's through my job. And it's let me tell you, it's they're all about the money, honestly. So, so. y'all don't have y'all don't have an open selection where it's not just Blue Cross Blue Shield. Y'all don't have two other options or another no. option. Nope. Dear Lord Jesus. Okay. <laughs> look like Chasta. Look like Chasta has dropped out again. Uh, oh no, I'm here. Oh, you here? Okay. I'm here. I, I didn't see you. I'm sorry for taking up everybody's time. Okay. Well, no. Uh, I see it's almost seven thirty. How long do we have? Uh, we end at um. Well, it's eight thirty our time, seven thirty your time. Yeah. Right. 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 No, I was just letting y'all finish though. talking. I was gonna. I was gonna end it out. I was just waiting on y'all to finish. <laughs> Look like Frank want to say something. Yeah, go ahead. No, I just said we had a minute left. That's it. That's 60 seconds. That's a long time, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> How's your day been going? <laughs> <laughs> well, as always, it's always nice to talk with you all. I embrace the love and the knowledge that we share amongst one another. And God bless. Stay safe. Awesome. All right. Anybody else have anything they want to share before I close out? I just okay. wanted to say thanks for listening. I'm sorry that was long, but it, I think <laughs> oh, I've, no. I've been trying to get out for a long time. That's, That's what, what we're here for. for. That's what we're here for. Regina, right. get with Nikki Givens if you can. Yeah, you know what? I think I have her number too. Okay. Uh, Frank, you got anything you want to say before we go? No, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming. Um, just, I mean, everybody basically knew that I was sick. And actually, as you can see, I'm doing better. I'm hanging out here. Um, so, don't, you know, one thing I do want to say though, and I, I said it to, I think I said it to Chester too, is that everybody I know is afraid of this virus, but you know, um, if it happens, it happens. Um, people get it different ways. So just like sarcoidosis, you know, it's another battle. Um, so don't, you know, don't be overly obsessed. I did everything. I mean, I've been in the house since February <laughs> and, you know, so if it, it happens, it happens. But your mind, you don't forget about your mind. I've always said this. Your mind is 90% of your battle. All right? If your mind, if you go in it positive, you, you know, you can beat this thing. And I um, I can tell you I'm one of, I mean, I had it bad. I won't, I won't lie. But, um, and don't worry about, I uh, will post this because I'm pretty much done with it. <laughs> So I'm not too worried about it anymore. But um, uh, I, I mean, I still have problems with my lungs a little bit. Uh, but other than that, all my, uh, um, almost every one of my uh, other symptoms, which I had 
everything on that list and everything they just added, I had on, I was already having. Um, so I just think that you guys, you know, don't live your life in fear in total fear. Yeah. Be careful, but don't live your life in fear. I know Trina was saying stuff like that. Don't, I mean, I'm, I can tell you, I've, <laughs> I've been through a lot. Um, yeah, a lot of people who know me, you know, two years ago, I was deemed terminal. Uh, you know what? I, and this happened. So it, it happens, but I'm still here. Like I always say, I'm too stubborn to go. That's <laughs> not done with you yet, Frank. That, there's a reason why you're still here. Yeah. Frank, you, you're yeah, like me, Frank. Why we're all here. <laughs> Frank, you're like me. The, the law is not ready for you and the devil can't handle you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I just want you guys to know, you know, if it does happen, yeah, I mean, I and like Chas was saying, there's a lot of people who are dealing with it right now, and yeah, I pray for each one of them, and each one of them have it differently, and um, some people have it really bad, some people had it, you know, not so bad, but like I said, don't don't give up. That's the biggest thing. Don't give up. Just the same thing with sarcoidosis. Don't give up. There's no reason to give up. You you see how many people are here? We're all here behind each and every one of you guys. And if you could see, there's two of me. So I'm behind you two two times. <laughs> it's you, know, you know, Frank, I want to say this to you. I'm not going to say anything else. That was a state representative from Louisiana, young, young African-American guy that, that contracted the illness. And he said, he said he was to the point where he was about to give up. A, a, a young male nurse, he said, would, would hold his hand and talk to him. And, you know, it, it made him not give up. So, you know, that's one that we have to keep that, try to keep that positive mind on it. anything, even with dealing with sarcoidosis, you know. If, if you get to where you can't, I mean, you know, you can't I, I, do the things you used to do, don't give up. Yep. I, I mean, I can even say that there was a point here. I mean, they took in New York. It's really bad. Um, the, my doc, I had three different doctors tell me that if I go to the hospital, I'm writing my death sentence. Um, mm. But there was one night I can honestly say there was one night that my wife had to stay up pretty much all night to watch to make sure that I was still breathing. That's how bad I was at one point. But, you know, like I said, I never gave up. And so, you know, I just feel like that's the one thing that we all, we're all fighters. They call us sarcoidosis warriors for a reason. So, you know, that, and like, again, once again, thanks for, for all you guys to come here. I do appreciate it. Awesome. 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 Um, also, just to piggyback off what Frank was saying, um, remember Rhonda, she um is actually you know i was telling the group earlier that she's actually on the list to receive a double lung transplant and wow. she was just diagnosed with pneumonia and coronavirus so we're praying to god that this does not set her back um we're going to pray that those two lungs stay where they are so that she can get them um and everything like that and you know, just make sure you keep her lifted and pray for everybody who deals with sarcoidosis. My last and final thoughts before we leave, Frank's last words were don't quit. And so I'm going to tell you the very same thing. Don't give up. Don't quit. Keep walking. Keep trying. There is help and there is happiness ahead. It's going to be all right. We're going to be fine. It will be. We're going to be great. We're going to get through it. And I always say, you never see what's on the other side if you don't go through what you got to get through. So everybody have a good night. Look for the flyer for the next meeting. And I want to see some more dance parties. I want to see some music videos, whatever we got. Um, I, Regina, I want to see some green beans and some corn. And yes, whatever. I don't see no dancing for me. <laughs> so I want to see it all. So um, before, we go, before we go, everybody's <laughs> invited to uh, the Sarcoidosis Awareness Foundation of Louisiana support group meeting on Thursday night. I put the uh, my email address on the uh, 
chat. So you, you send me your email. I guess I'll send you an invitation to John. But we're going to let the good time roll on that. So we can all party on that Thursday night. <laughs> okay. Thursday night. Okay. Thursday night. Thursday night. Thursday night. Thursday night. Thursday night. We are going to try to add a third one on for next month, too, just so you guys know. Um, I'm working on that. All right. Cool. All right. Night, All right. everybody. Bye, everybody. Be blessed. Good night.